Let's go to our very first story. Britain signs agreements on security and economic development. Nigeria and Britain on Wednesday in Abuja signed two agreements on defense and security partnership as well as economic development reform. Speaking brief briefly before signing the agreements, President Muhammad Buhari stated that Nigeria and the United Kingdom will continue to enhance cooperation in tackling corruption and reducing poverty. The Nigerian leader lauded the British government for its assist assistance to Nigeria in the fight against terrorism and pledged Nigeria's readiness to strengthen the relationship between these two countries. Chukudi, what's in this for us? Did we even get to see the contents? Because a lot of the criticism attacking this was that we didn't even get to see the contents of the partnership. Key, um, key policy makers did not get to see some of the contents of this agreement before it was signed. Is, this, is there anything in I this I mean, if us? you do not tidy your end, you would end up shortchanged. I mean, if you look at those that came, you know, with the prime minister, the British prime minister, these were people who were ground, who are grounded, who are grounded, and they came prepared. See, let me tell you, the fact that Theresa May, you know, came to the United, came to Nigeria, you know, quickly touched down in Lagos, and she's off to Kenya, is not because she loves Nigeria. She loves Nigeria, but it's not love, love like you know. She, she loves the way you know bread and beans will complement. The truth is. Like we say, in international diplomacy, there are no permanent friendships, no permanent enmities, essentially about permanent interest. If you look at the United Kingdom today, the United Kingdom is preparing for life outside the EU, Brexit. That is why she is shortling the key countries in Africa. She was in South Africa before coming down to Nigeria, and now she's off to Kenya. If you look at the strategic importance of these countries, in Southern Africa, in West Africa and Africa, looking at the population of Nigeria and also Kenya, you will know that she's just setting the groundwork. And remember, I've always mentioned when we discuss British world institutions or countries that are a lot more technologically developed or advanced than Nigeria, it is essentially about what you bring to the table. Now, there's this talk of investing £70 million to create 100,000 jobs. It is not just because they want to create 100,000 jobs so that there will be jobs now. It is also to check those who always wake up and decide that the golden fleece is in the United Kingdom. It's putting a lot of pressure. And politically, it's also affecting them. There was a massive protest in Germany recently. You have people who used to hide before and talk about illegal migration coming out in public now to say there's a lot of pressure. People are competing with us for our resources. We do not want these people in our country. Now, what Nigeria must do it's not to just say, oh, we signed a memorandum of understanding. We saw the picture. You know, the president was chilling at the back. The examiner was chilling at the back. The ministers were signing. It is about what you bring to the table so that you can take advantage. It's about exploring. I don't want to use the word exploit. It's about exploring. If your hand is beneath, they keep giving you. They keep giving you. They're not collecting anything from you. They will keep giving you and giving you and giving you. And they attach conditionalities to it. So aside from the historical ties we have, with the United Kingdom, because they were our colonial masters. We must also look at the reason why these people are coming into Nigeria. It is essentially to protect their interests, because when they step out of the EU, they are left in the cold. Do you think that her visit will also help us re with regards to businesses and foreign investments as well? Do you think there will be a boost wishy, in any way? Wishy, Does it guarantee wishy, anything? Because wishy, it doesn't look like there have been boost. any established framework. If you do not set up, if you don't have policies in place that would allow for foreign investors are after their profits. Nobody is coming to invest in business because the person loves you or the person who just wants to answer Magnus Okoro and Sons with a business establishment in Nigeria. There are capitalists that are looking to make profit. If you do not have an enabling environment, if there's no security, if there's no power, the person will not come because they would have to spend two times or ten times that they, that they will spend in investment and they will not get their capital. Beyond that as well, beyond that as well, let's not forget that the UK and Nigeria are both parts of the Commonwealth, right? Now, under the Commonwealth Charter, it's stated that there is a need to protect vulnerable states. Now, this is something we've seen the UK leveraging on, not necessarily to protect, but actually to exploit for several years. A recent case before this, we heard about the £700,000 being taken from their security fund to build a new Kirikiri Global Standard Prison here in Nigeria. Are we going to come and say that that is for our benefit or is it for theirs? Of, of course, course it's for theirs. All their so we back. have an issue now when it comes to negotiation. How much trust can we put into the negotiation skills of our current administration? It's clear. We've had 19 years of uninterrupted democratic rule and it would seem that, you know, our development has been stunted. Mm. So you, it, I always insist that we must get people who are visionary, you know, people in the mode of Thomas Sankara, 
that will go into government. First and foremost, you can look at whatever, you know, um, conditionalities are tied to what they bring and say, well, we know that this would benefit us because in the immediate, we're in a desperate situation. I mean, a man whose house is on fire, or a woman or a man whose house is on fire, will not be asking you what the color of the fire extinguisher canister is. I'm not interested in knowing if the canister of the fire extinguisher is painted in blue or red. I just want you to put out the fire. So if we are in a precarious situation and they come, they want to exploit you because you re you're desperate. So what you must do is to be able to manage your own resources. I mean, China, do you know that the European Union, as a block of countries in Europe, have dealt with African countries to the tune of over 200 billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. And China alone as a country in dealing with Africa as a, as yeah. a continent has spent over 180 billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. China, one country, the EU as a collection of European states. Now it is essentially about interest. A lot of people are afraid of the inroads that China is making. China is trying to correct or bridge the def infrastructure deficit in Africa by constructing and if you look at the West, they claim that they are principled. You cannot cut something and give it to them. I'm not saying that Chinese people are corrupt. But, you know, if you cut something, they might collect and say, let's just do it this way. So they are looking at the development and the inroads that China has made into Nigeria, and they are afraid. See, it is essentially about protecting every, everyone's interest. And you must be ready to protect your interest. The reason why she went to South Africa and not maybe Eritrea or Ethiopia the reason why she came to Nigeria and not maybe Ghana or Sierra Leone, and the reason why she's going to Kenya and not maybe Somalia, is because these are strategic partners. I mean, we so are like the second biggest. If you are considered a strategic partner, you must position yourself in a way that you would take advantage of that situation. I'm afraid. I'm, 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 I'm very, 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 very afraid that we haven't positioned that. For some people, it was just basically to just shake hands with the British Prime Minister or take five pictures and hang it in their living room and say, we took pictures with the queen. We should be looking at 10, 20, 30 years from now. That is essentially what it is. All right. We are still okay. speaking some more about Theresa May's visit. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.